Let's begin with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful. Light the fire of your love in them. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Remember that we are in ordinary time now. So what color was the priest's chasuble on Sunday? Green. And here's a picture of Father Hammond at Mass on Sunday in a green chasuble. At Mass this weekend, the Gospel reading was from the Gospel of Luke. We'll read the story that the priest read from the Gospel on Sunday. It is in the Children's Bulletin. There are a few little puzzles. Below this video, there is a link to the page at the class website for this class session. On that page, you'll find a link to the Children's Bulletin. If you want to do the puzzles, you can ask your mom or dad to print out the bulletin for you, and you can do the puzzles. Now, let's read. At the very top of the page, it says, Calling the First Disciples. That's the title of what we're reading. Jesus got into Simon's boat and taught the people who were on the shore. There's a puzzle on that page. If you connect the dots from one to two to three to four, you'll finish the picture. And it will be a picture showing Jesus standing in a boat, preaching to people who are standing on the shore. Next page, Simon hadn't caught any fish all night. But Jesus said to him, let down your nets and you'll catch fish. What happened? There's a maze on that page. If you begin at the top of the maze, you can try to figure out how to get the fish at the bottom. Next page. They filled two boats full of fish. Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch people. The fishermen left all they had to follow Jesus. And there's a little puzzle on the bottom of that page where you can find hidden words. The hidden words are James, Boat, John, Simon, Fish, Net. Now we'll read it all together. Jesus got into Simon's boat and taught the people who were on the shore. Simon hadn't caught any fish all night, but Jesus said to him, Let down your nets, and you'll catch fish. What happened? They filled two boats full of fish. Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch people. The fishermen left all they had, to follow Jesus. The Gospel reading we just read is from the Gospel of Luke. The same story is also in the Gospel of Mark. We're going to look at three paintings that show the story about Jesus turning fishermen into fishers of men. Below this video there is a link to the page at the class website for this class session. On that page, 
you'll find these pictures. If you click on the pictures, you will be able to see big versions of the pictures and you'll be able to look closely at what the artists painted. The first painting was made more than 700 years ago. It shows Jesus standing on the land, talking to Simon Peter and his brother Andrew, who are in a boat holding a net with some fish. The painting is part of a huge piece of art called Maesta. The art was made to be put at an altar at a church in Italy. The piece of art had two sides and it had many different paintings on each side. This is the front side of the piece of art and you can see that the piece of art is made of many, many paintings. And this is the back side of the piece of art. You see that the piece of art had many paintings. The artist painted all of the paintings on wood. The painting that shows Jesus standing on the land, talking to the two men in a boat, is in the bottom row of paintings. Here is a closer look at the bottom row of paintings. You can see the painting. It is the third painting from the left in that bottom row. The art piece was in that church for about 450 years. Then the huge piece of art was cut into pieces, leaving many individual paintings and the individual paintings are now in many places around the world. This painting is called The Calling of the Apostles Peter and Andrew. It is now in the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. And you could ride the subway from Bethesda down to the art gallery and see this painting. The second painting was made about 550 years ago. The man who was the Pope at that time asked the painter to make the painting. The Pope was asking many artists to paint many paintings to decorate a new gigantic church building called the Sistine Chapel. The painting is a fresco. That means it was painted right on the wall inside the church. The painting is unusual because it has different parts of a story in the same painting. At the front, you see Jesus in a blue robe with a halo. Two men are kneeling in front of him, Simon Peter and Andrew who became two of Jesus' twelve apostles. That's the main part of the painting that you first see. But Jesus is in the painting in two other places. On the left side, behind the front scene, there's another picture of Jesus with the same two fishermen. That part of the painting shows Jesus talking to Simon Peter and Andrew when they are in their boat, before they kneeled in front of Jesus. So this part of the painting happened before the big part of the painting that you see at the front. And on the right side, behind the front scene, there is a third picture of Jesus. This part of the painting tells the part of the story that happened after Simon Peter and his brother Andrew kneeled in front of Jesus. In this part of the painting, 
Jesus is standing on the shore with Simon Peter and his brother Andrew, and Jesus is calling to James and John. James and John also became Jesus' apostles. The other man in the boat with James and John is their father, Zebedee. And now you can see the entire painting again. This happened at the Sea of Galilee, which is also called the Lake of Genesaret, and a few other names. It is a big lake in the country of Israel. The Jordan River runs through it. You remember that Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. The third painting was made about 150 years ago. It shows Jesus standing on the land, talking to the brothers James and John. They are in a boat with other people. Standing on the land with Jesus are the brothers Simon Peter and Andrew, who already had decided to become Jesus' apostles. This week we'll do lesson number 19. It begins on page 169. The lesson is called, What Helps Us to Pray? So, let's turn to page 169. One, six, nine. Page 169, you see two people looking at a book. I think it's a little girl and her dad is reading to her from perhaps the Bible. At the top of the page, it says, What helps us to pray? God gives us many gifts to help us pray. God gives us our families. God gives us the church and the liturgy. God also gives us his own word in the Bible. Even with all this help, it is sometimes hard to pray. God wants us to keep trying. Prayer opens our hearts to God and makes us holy. Turn the page. Top of the page. The church is a family of believers. God creates us to be his family. He gives us the church to help us pray. The church is a family of believers. When we pray with the church, we pray with those who are living and those who are in heaven. We pray for one another and for those who have died. When we pray with the church, we pray with the saints. We ask the saints to help us follow Jesus and live holy lives the way they did. We ask them to pray for us just as we might ask a friend to pray for us. There's a picture of a painting on that page and the painting shows many saints, all who are now in heaven. I don't know who all of those saints are. I'd love to figure out who painted that painting and who the saints are supposed to be, but I just don't know now. But I do know that saints in heaven are praying for you and they are praying for me. Next page. Page 171, top of the page. The Bible is God's word for us. The Bible also helps us to pray. The Bible is God's own word to us. In the Bible, we learn about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We learn how Jesus prayed and taught his followers to pray. Many prayers come from the Bible. The one you probably know best is the Lord's Prayer. Jesus taught this prayer to his followers. We pray the Lord's Prayer every time we celebrate Mass. And another prayer we know well is, In the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We use these words every time we pray the sign of the cross. And the priest also sends us into the world at the end of Mass, just as Jesus sent his disciples. Page 172. On the right side of the page, there's a picture of a little boy reading a book, probably a Bible. Listen carefully to the readings from the Bible at Mass. You can also pray with the Bible at home. You can read the words and the stories in a children's Bible. Read the Bible quietly to yourself or ask your family to read it with you. Really try to pay attention to God's Word. God always has something special to tell us. We are working on learning the Hail Mary prayer. We hope that you will know it by the end of first grade. The words in the Hail Mary prayer come from the Bible. I'm going to read a part of the Bible that we read before Christmas. It's the part that tells about the angel Gabriel coming to Mary. Listen for the words that are the same as in the Hail Mary prayer. I'll skip some parts. From the Bible. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and his kingdom will have no end. And your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then the angel departed. Mary went with haste to a Judean town in the hillside, where she entered the house of Zechariah and Elizabeth. She greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped into her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Did you hear the words, The Lord is with you, and Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Now listen again to the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Page 173. At the bottom of the page, there's a picture of a family praying. You see dad and mom and two little girls. It looks as if they're at a picnic and they have joined hands and they are praying together. Top of the page, the words say, families pray together. The church and the Bible help us to pray. Our families also help us to pray. God gives us our family to be our church at home. Praying with your family every day helps us grow closer to God. Prayer brings families closer together. Prayer unites us. 
It helps our family to be one as the Blessed Trinity is one. We should pray at home to gather and often. We can pray as we start our day, before meals, and at bedtime. We can ask God to help our keep our family safe and healthy. We can ask God to bless family members in need. Any time of the day is a good time to pray together. Turn the page. Page 174, top of the page. Prayer makes our hearts strong. Even with all the help God gives us, it is not always easy to pray. We might feel bored or tired when we pray. We might think about other things, even when we do not mean to. God wants us to keep trying when we find it hard to pray. We can ask the Holy Spirit to help us. Praying shows God that we want to live as his friends, even when it is hard. Praying makes our hearts grow strong and holy. Prayer shows God that we love him. Your textbook has a little paragraph about the saints Gregory and Nona at the bottom of page 175. Saint Gregory and Saint Nona were husband and wife, and both of them became saints. And they had three children, and all three of their children became saints. Saint Nona was born about 300 years after Jesus was born about 1,700 years ago. She was born in a place now known as the country of Turkey. She was the daughter of Christians, and she was raised as a Christian. She was a Christian when she married Gregory, but he was not a Christian. She prayed to God day and night for her husband to become a Christian. Finally, her husband had a vision while he slept and he converted to being a Christian. Then, Gregory devoted himself entirely to the church. He became the Bishop of Nazianzus, and he also is known as Saint Gregory of Nazianzus the Elder. There is a coloring page for Saint Noda, included in the stack of saints pages that you got for Christmas. There's a coloring sheet for you to help you as you memorize the Hail Mary. You'll find a link to the coloring sheet at the class session page. The link to the page is below this video. It's time to say goodbye. We'll begin with the Our Father. You know the words and you can read them as we all say them. And we'll be adding the Hail Mary to our closing prayers to help you memorize it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel, please defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke the devil, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, 
cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Bye-bye. I'll see you next week.